Hey guys, this is the second episode of the Karambit project. In this video, we are going to texture the knife in Substance Painter. Before we start, I wanted to let you know that I made a Patreon page. So if you're interested in becoming a patron to support the channel and to get access to some exclusive content, feel free to join. So first we have to unfrap the UVs and I will show you how to do. We are going to isolate each part to add the seam. So press Shift H to hide everything but the blade. In the select menu, choose select sharp edges. Make sure that everything has been selected. Right click, then click on mark seam. Press U and unwrap. Press Alt H to exit the isolate mode and repeat what we just did on the other parts. For the handle, I'm not going to select the sharp edges because I have a lot of smooth areas. Instead, I'm going to manually select where I want the seams to be. I didn't show it, but don't forget to select the edges at the other side of the knife. So now I'm going to use U-dims. If you don't know what U-dims are, they allow to spread the UV islands across several different textures. So to do that, I'm going to add a material for each part. And in UV Pack Master 3, you can choose groups to tiles, and for the grouping method, you can choose by material. That way, the UVs of the grip and the blade will be grouped together in different UV spaces. Don't worry if you don't have UV Pack Master, you can do the same without any add ons by clicking on the Show Overlay menu, and here you will be able to add UV tiles. When you're done, export an OBJ or FBX file. We are now in Substance Painter. Import your 3D model and choose your texture resolution. The higher the better. The shelf on the left is where you can find your materials, matte materials, masks, brushes, alphas, filters and textures. Next we have the 3D and the 2D viewports. In the top right side you have the texture set list. You can hide or unhide any parts by clicking on the little eyes. Under there is the layer panel where you can put your materials and at the bottom you have the brush and material properties. This is where you adjust the materials parameters. You can reduce the 2D viewport to maximize the 3D viewport size. To rotate in the viewport hold ALT left click, to zoom hold ALT right click, and to pan hold ALT scroll wheel. If you want to set the viewport camera to front view, top view or side view, you can rotate your model by 90 degrees by holding ALT shift left click. Before adding some materials, we are going to bake some useful maps that you can see on the left side of this window. Set the output size to 1K, 2K or 4K, it's up to you. For this project I chose 4K, click on bake and wait a few seconds. Do it for each part.
If you're wondering why there is a weird shadow baked on the blade, it's because of the ambient occlusion map that we just baked. For the blade, we don't need it, so I'm just going to delete it. Adjust the size of your brush by holding Ctrl right click and drag your mouse left and right. And to adjust the hardness, hold Ctrl right click and drag your mouse up and down. Let me show you the difference. You can enable symmetry by clicking on this button to paint on both sides of the model. Let's add our first material. Go to the layer tab and delete the layer one. Add a fill layer. And in the base color, type gradient. You can also find this filter on the left panel in the filters tab. To display the gradient, click on false. I'm going to texture the blade like this CSGO Karambit fade skin, but I'm not going to do exactly the same. The goal of this video is to show you how you can add this kind of effect. Select three colors that you like. and move the color position sliders to get a smooth gradient. If you want to rotate the HDRI of the environment, hold shift right click and drag your mouse left and right. Put the metallic value to 1 and adjust the roughness. As you can see, there is a part of the blade that doesn't have the good color. To fix it, duplicate your material, change the projection method Add a black mask and on the left side select the polygon fill tool and click on the UV chunk fill. Then click on the UV part to fix. Add a folder to keep everything organized. Put both materials inside and give it a name. Open the smart materials tab and pick this aluminium brushed warm material. Drag it on the blade. Add a black mask and a generator. Select curvature and adjust the global balance to make the transition between the two materials sharper. Add a paint layer set to subtract to remove the aluminium on the other side of the blade. If your brush orientation keeps moving, change its alignment to camera. Select a squared brush to paint a straight line. Next, go to the Filters tab and drag and drop the matte finish rough filter on top of the aluminum material. It is going to add an extra layer of roughness. Reduce the brushing intensity if you think there's too much contrast. Add a steel smart material and uncheck the color button. Add a regular aluminum material, add a generator, and select metal edge wear. I'm adjusting the parameters to get some paint damages on the sharp edges. And again, you can erase some areas with a paint layer set to subtract. Add a new folder and put everything inside. Give it a name. Add a black mask. Select the polygon fill tool. Click on mesh fill and select the blade. I want to reduce the height damages of the steel smart material because they are too visible and deep. I'm going to add some dirt on the blade. To do that, add a spotted concrete material. Uncheck the height button, set a brown color, open the smart masks tab, type dirty and choose the dusty dirty one. Drag and drop it on the concrete material and reduce the opacity. For the metal part at the back of the handle, I'm going to add a steel painted stained smart material, change the color to a dark gray. Add the matte finish rough filter to get some roughness variation. If your seams are visible, click on the filter and set the triplanar mapping to true. The seams should be gone. The edge wear effect is too visible. I'm going to reduce it a little bit.
add a new folder, put the underneath layers inside and give it a name. Add a black mask and select that rounded piece with the Mesh Fill tool. To make the knurling effect on the handle, add a plastic diamond material, add a black mask, and with the Polygon Fill tool, select this area. I removed the surface grain, but it's up to your personal preferences. Increase the scale and rotate the texture by 90 degrees. Add a plastic material, uncheck the color button, open the textures tab and type stripes, activate the height and drag and drop the texture. Adjust the number of stripes and add a black mask. Use the polygon fill tool, rotate the material and increase the scale to 2. Add a plastic PVC material, I like it because it has a nice surface grain. Change the color to black. Add a matte finish rough filter. Set the triplanar mapping to true. To add some dirt, add a spotted concrete material. Uncheck the height and change the color to a brown. Add a Dust Dirty Smart Mask and change the color spot to a light brown. To be able to paint on the bands, add an anchor point on the stripes layer. Select the Dirt Mask and at the bottom click on Micro Height, open the Anchor Point tab and select it. Open the Micro Details and set the Micro Height to True. Add a Paint Layer. Open the brush tab and select a dirt brush. You can paint some dirt where you want. And don't forget to paint on the other side. Put all the layers into a folder and we are done with the handle. I'm just going to add a little bit more damages on the blade. Add an aluminum brush one smart material. Add a stained scratches smart mask. And adjust the parameters to get more or less scratches. It's up to you. To export your textures, press Ctrl Shift E and choose your file type. In the next episode, we will add the textures in Blender and the lighting, and we will see how we can export a cool render. I hope you learned something. If yes, please like and comment the video, it helps me a lot. Thank you for watching, take care.